All right, what am I? Oh, hello, shiny, crafty people. Tim Totten here, and welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm showing you something super fun that you can make for uh, the sweet little people in your life that you want to give a little something to for Easter. And it's these cute little bags. Now, you may have noticed these look kind of like ears, and that's great because it's a little bunny rabbit. Isn't that the cutest thing? Uh, this one's relatively small. This is made out of a piece of fabric, two pieces of fabric that are nine inches by 22 inches, which just happens to be half of a uh, of a fat quarter. So you can either make one of these out of a fat quarter and have the same fabric inside and out, but if you want the two uh, variable colors so that it looks like the inside of the ears is a different color, well, you just use two different fat quarters and you can make two different little bunny rabbit bags. And I have, I have some cute candy in this one and a couple of little eggs and treats. And this is the kind of thing I would give to maybe my um, my nieces or nephews or children of my friends when I get to see them at, at Easter and I'm not trying to compete with a big ba basket they got somewhere else, but just want to give them something a little cute that I made that they could keep uh, and use later. And I'll, I'll show you what this sort of looks like um, and, I, and then I'm going to come down to the table. But you see it's this bag that's real simple, cute little handles. And you actually could even, uh, this is the bag you can vary by sort of stitching together here and creating a cute little bag too, but I like it this way. And then you just have plenty of room to put stuff on the inside. So while you come down here, to the cutting table and I'll lay out all the stuff we need to get started. To make this really cute bunny, we're gonna need a number of items. We're gonna need some fabrics, a two fat quarters. These are some bundles that I bought. And this one's really pretty because it's these pastels. I like those. And of course I got another bundle. These were each less than $7 at, uh, at Walmart, although you can buy uh, fat quarters elsewhere. And you're probably gonna need, you either need one fat quarter if you're just gonna make one of these and you're gonna do a single color, or you're gonna need two fat quarters to get the different colors. And that'll actually make two of these uh, style of bunnies. So you're gonna need those, you're gonna need some headbands. You're gonna need some pom-poms for the tail if you wanna put that on. Now, I like these because they're multicolor. Um, I got these at Walmart as well, but I also found these white pom-poms at uh, the Dollar Tree. So they were only $1.25. You'll need something to mark with, of course, something to cut with, and maybe something to draw lines with. So uh, let's get some of our fabric chosen and we will go ahead and uh, iron the fat quarters out at the ironing board and uh, I'll tell you more about how this goes together. So I'm just gonna pick out which of these Waverly bundles that uh, that I want, which of these fabrics. And I kind of like the idea of doing the, maybe this, uh, this sort of greenish blue and yellow together. I think that's really cute. Um, so I'll set those aside and I'll do these two. Uh, and what I will do is I'll go ahead and uh, iron these both out. Now a fat quarter is 18 by 22, and that basically means they've taken a entire yard of fabric, 36 inches, by the width of the fabric on the bolt, which is typically 44 inches, so folded in half is 22. So they've taken a 36 by 44 piece, and they cut it into quarters, which is 18 by 22. If they just cut that 36 inch piece into four pieces, that would be nine inches by 44. And that really wouldn't help you do a whole lot of different activities. So it's a lot easier that they do it 18 by 22. And in fact, the one I'm gonna teach you is a nine by 22. It's gonna use two pieces, nine by 22. So you could get it out of one fat quarter, nine and nine, 22, 20, or uh, you could do the contrasting. I like the idea of the bunny's ears being a different color inside. So that's ready to go. I'm actually gonna layer these on top of one another right sides together. So when it's time to cut it, I just have to literally cut it right down the middle. That'll be super easy. So let's get my other one on top and I'll layer it right side to right side, pretty sides to pretty sides. And you can measure, of course, so you know which side, but it should be pretty obvious here that this side is longer than this side. Now these aren't exactly um, this one doesn't appear to be, maybe when I iron it, it'll come out to more exact to match the other one. And if that were the case, it's a good reason that I layer them on top of each other so that when I cut out a pair of them to make one of these, it'll actually be the right size. The two will match each other in size is what I'm trying to point out. So I'm just gonna press that to get it to where I need it to be and they are ready to go. So let's go back over to the cutting table and cut this apart. So I'm over here at my cutting table and I have my piece now. Uh, the two are face to face. 
And I'm gonna sort of square this up to get nine by 22. And I'm gonna use measurements on my table. You can't see them, but I do have some measurements on this table so I can make sure that we're getting close to accurate. And I'm gonna try to square it up specifically. So I'll come over here and get this line straightened up because this is a 24 inch ruler. It's gonna allow me to get the full 22 inch height. And if I were doing a lot of these, I think I might decide to uh, make a template because the template would be a lot easier to draw on it. I'm gonna show you two ways to do this um, because it's gonna be important to know there's two different versions of how you can do it. That'll be my first one. And if I were doing a second one, I would go ahead and cut that one also to nine inches or at least as close as I can to it. Right now, I'm just gonna get it out of the way. And then I'm gonna make sure my ends are straightened up. And part of the way I'm gonna do that is I'm actually gonna fold this whole thing in half and I'm not so worried about the fact that there's some selvage edge here because I'm gonna lose most of it, but I just wanna trim this up to get it exactly um, the right width. So since I folded it in half, now I need 11 inches. I need 22, but obviously I need 11 once I straighten it up because I folded it in half. So I've taken that 22 inches and folded it into half of that size. So I need 11 and this will just trim off some of the, some of the junk parts on the edge. And it also straightened these up because at the end, it, remember it wasn't exactly straight. So now what I've got when I open that up is exactly nine by 22. So what I'm gonna do now is I need to cut in my uh, pieces here, right here uh, at the top and at the bottom for the ears. And then I'm going to, um, from there, move forward and show you how this goes together. So we're here at the smaller cutting table because I want to show you how I'm going to get the shape I need out of this. I'm gonna keep it folded and I'm gonna measure down a particular amount of space down from the top and in from each side. So I basically need to find a space in this area because this will create, this bottom portion will create the, the carrier for all the stuff I'll put inside. And then the two other portions will create the ears. So what I've decided to do is that since this is 11 inches, I'm going to come down right about five inches. Or actually, I'm going to do four and a half in the middle. And that'll give me these cute ears that will go on either side. So four and a half over and four and a half down will be where I put a point. And one of the easiest ways to use that to do that is to use a square or some type of thing that has measurements. See if I go up to four and a half on here and over to four and a half, uh, four and one half here, I get a point where those two come together. And it'll, it's conveniently on a 45 degree axis. So if I put that point right on that four and a half inch point right on the corner, I get four and a half, a four and a half inch square. I'm gonna zoom you in on that so you can see what that looks like. Now, the only difference with that is I don't wanna to go to the exact, I will do that here now. And then when I actually draw the line in, it looks gonna look a little different. So I'm gonna draw the point now that I've done that right down here in the center. And if I actually measured this across, you would see that that point falls at four and a half from the edge and from the other edge is at nine. So that four and a half is right down the middle. And then of course it's four and a half inches tall from here. Now, when I go ahead and cut the edge though, I'm gonna come over a quarter of an inch cause I don't want a point. I want a little bit more of a space there. So I can, there's two ways to do this. One of them and I'll show you one side this way and another side the other way. I'm gonna measure over a quarter of an inch and put a mark and then I'm gonna come with my line and draw that line on. So now I know that's where I need to cut. But I also can come in and use this ruler and put my quarter inch mark in the corner so it's over a quarter of an inch and then come down and to the point here and then I can use my rotary cutter to cut it without having drawn a line. 
Now your only negative it is you don't want to go too far over because you don't want to cut into all this space. And then I can come back and put my rotary cutter on this line that I've drawn. Now it might be easier for you to use a actual uh, draw line, might be a little easier. Also, frankly, if you have a template for this, it's gonna be a lot easier just to use a template. Now I'm gonna use a pair of scissors and just clip out this corner to make sure, because I'm going through four layers of fabric. And that cut out those points. This is all garbage, I don't need this for anything else. Now I just need to separate these two pieces of fabric. So I'm gonna separate out and then put them back together. Because what we're gonna do is, and remember it's gonna be right sides together because we're sewing on the wrong side. So I'm gonna fold this with the right sides together. And then I'm gonna sew down the side, the side, the side. And then for whatever one's gonna be the inside, I think this is gonna be the interior fabric. I'm gonna sew down and leave an opening and not sew the entire way. So you could mark yourself about a two or three inch opening on the side to know not to sew any further down. Now, if you feel like you need to pin these, by all means, come along and pin them and you can do that however you want. Some people like to pin, you know, in this direction so that when they're sewing, they take them out as they go. I like to pin um, perpendicular, meaning side to side against where I'm gonna sew. So I know I'm gonna sew down this direction. So I put the pins at a 90 degree angle so I can pull them out the side. That's really up to you. Or you can just not pin it because we're gonna start at the tops and stitch down. So let's go over the sewing machine and I'll show you how we're gonna stitch these. So here at the machine, I'm actually gonna use a contrasting thread, black thread. So you'll see the difference um, when they go together. And what I'm gonna do here is when I put these together, put those top points together and just sew a quarter inch seam all the way down the edge. And I'll give myself a little back it up a little bit in the corner. And again, as I showed you, as I told you, I'm doing a contrasting thread. And on the one that's gonna be the outer fabric, you just don't worry about it. Just you're gonna sew right down both edges because you're gonna turn this entire thing using the other fabric where you left that hole. Apparently I'm having a little bit of a, it pulled all that fabric into the stitching and I need to fix that. Okay. Now your stitching doesn't have to be super accurate on this because honestly, it's all gonna be inside and no one is gonna see most of this stitching. This is not a, this is not a project where I think anyone's gonna, you know, I don't, if your grandkids or whoever you're giving this to is gonna look that closely at your stitching, then uh, there's something strange about them because they don't care about the candy and everything on the inside. I mean, that would be, be, be I would be more interested in that part. <laughs> And remember, here's where we're gonna stop and backstitch and leave this opening so that we can turn the whole thing inside out. So now the two of these have been stitched. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna flatten these out. Now flattening these is an interesting experience, uh, but it's really super easy. You're basically gonna open it and you might say, oh, it's already flat. Like that doesn't make any sense. Why are you flattening it out? What I'm gonna do is basically open it and fold it again along where these points are. So I'm gonna line these two points up to each other like this and flatten out the top of it. And what it's gonna do is it's going to then flatten out the bottoms as well. You'll see it flattens out this side to create this point at the bottom. So we do that here and then we'll flip it over and make sure it's done on the other side as well, all the way flattened out. And the only reason we're doing this is so that we can box the bottoms. We don't want it just sort of sitting out there. So you see now what's happened here at the bottom is it's created that shape. Here it's open because they're all of those cuts, you know, but here at the bottom it's a it's a piece like this, closed. And then I'm going to measure about an inch 
And I'm just gonna use a mark on my machine, but you could come in and measure this, mark it with a, a, a pen if you wanted to, or something else to measure that. Um, but what I'm gonna do is I'll show you, I'm gonna layer this up to the machine and show you how I do an inch using the inch marker on the machine. So here on the machine, I have my markings and there's a one inch marker. So I can come in and put this, and I'm gonna put the edge right there at the one inch and stitch across. And as you make these, you can sort of decide what makes the most sense for you. You can decide which uh, measurement makes more sense for you to do. Is it an inch? Is it an inch and a half? Um, I even start sort of off and come in. And I'm going to do the same thing on the yellow one and then get ready to put these two together. Okay, so now that both pieces of these are done, we actually need to put them together. I'm gonna leave this one that has the opening on it. This is the yellow one I'm doing has the opening here to turn it inside out. I'm gonna leave that outside for now. And then we're gonna turn this one inside out. Now you could trim all these, by the way. You could come in and cut these pieces off if you felt it was necessary. I don't always do it because frankly, I don't really notice it in there. But if you were trying to be super exact, you would come and cut all four of those and make them prettier. So I'll do it now just because I wanna, I wanna show you what you might do. I, like I said, for me, this is a much more quick and dirty project. So we leave that open, uh, we'll leave that one turned inside out, and then we'll put this one the right side. And you see the shape we're gonna get when we're done. And then I'm going to put this one inside of the other. So I'll put it together just like here. Getting in those corners in place, but really what I'm gonna do is get these points lined up right here where we had cut those points. And this is where it's gonna be valuable to use a couple of pins. I'm specifically gonna pin across this so that it stays in place and I'll pin the other one. Now you could come along and pin all the way along this entire thing if you chose to, all along the edges, because you're gonna sew this entire thing sort of in one long continuous stitch. Because again, we don't have to leave an opening, we've already left that in the yellow one. So I'm gonna get these lined up together. And remember they were cut exactly together, so it makes sense to line them up together. They should go right back together in space. And then as you open up the long pieces and get those lined up, and then we're gonna just Push one to one side and the other to the other, right at these points. And we're going to stitch along that. So I line up the two stitches. You see the, the stitch here and the one there. Line those up and you could put a point in that, a, a pin in that if you wanted to. Um, so let me do that. I'll put a quick pin here just to get those together. And I'm going to go to the machine and I'm going to stitch all the way down to this point from here down, using that, that stitch line and go a quarter inch away and go all the way around. So let's do that now. I'm gonna start right at the end here. Just sew off from the end, cause I'm gonna clip that corner point and just use a quarter inch seam allowance. I'm not worried about it being too perfect, too exact as I go just to make sure at the corners is where I'm a little more careful. So I come into the corner, I'm gonna pull that pin out so I'm not worried about it. And I want to, I'm want i gonna backstitch even a little bit here because I want that to be really well secured. And when I turn it, just make sure you're turning to where you have a, now a quarter of an inch seam allowance down the other side. You see here I have that, that quarter inch seam allowance. And then of course, if you had pins in this, you would be taking out pins as you went along. What I'm really paying attention to here is that I want these two points to come together uh, when I get to this point. So I'm gonna go ahead and line these up now, sort of nest them into each other. And I will really just stitch right off the end of this. 
I'm gonna stitch off the end of that, back stitch it, and then I can turn and come into the same exact thing I just did before down the other side. Again, I'm using a quarter inch seam allowance, but if for some reason you get a little bit off of that, it doesn't matter, it's not gonna hurt because no one's gonna measure these against another. All right, again, I sort of know where my quarter inch for that is, but if you needed to mark it, you could easily do that. The reason I back st stitch at that corner, that edge where we turned, is because we're gonna later clip that so it turns easier inside out and you wanna make sure. Now you see here, I have a little bit of blue fabric coming out from behind the yellow. That's fine, I'm just gonna use the yellow as my guide rather than the other. And it'll just go across the top here. And now those parts are put together. Now, of course, I told you we will come along and clip this corner edge right here, uh, this space in here, and that's why I gave that a little extra stitching. Now, here at the table, I am going to, um, I'm going to do a couple things here. One of them is I'm going to come along and clip at this corner so this corner will look nice and pretty when it is uh, ready. And I'm just going to use a pair of scissors to cut out some of this extra material that's in the way because I really want this to... I like these curved scissors because they'll give me sort of a curved cut. See how I did that? Kind of give me a little bit of a, took out some of this fabric because when it pushes in, I don't want it to, to really clump up that corner. So I'll come in here and cut carefully. I don't know where we got these curved scissors. This is um, one of the stations at my, my workshop where we do all of our sewing for the products we make for funeral homes. Uh, and so I don't know whose those are, but they're great. And I think Lori, I'm at Lori's station, so she must use them. And then I'm gonna come back and just cut this to ease this material when it turns. And so I'll just cut to that point, but not completely. You see where I've sort of cut into that point, but not all the way through the thread. I'll do the same thing on this side. I'll do it on the blue side so you'll see it a little. Maybe it'll give you a different image. So you can really see where that point is. And I'm just gonna to cut to the point, but not all the way. I've left about a 16th or an eighth of an inch there between the two because I don't want it to unravel all the uh, threads that have been done the sewing. And then we're gonna find that hole in the side that we left open, which is right here. And then we're gonna berth this thing, turn it inside out. I'm gonna use, I didn't show you earlier, but I'm gonna use a point turner to get these points turned when they, when they actually turn inside out. So we will turn all of it inside out. Now, the great part about these is you could do two with the exact same fabrics, but turn one one fabric inside out and turn the other fabric inside out and you would have a complete sort of a different look because one fabric would be, uh, you know, like this one would be sort of tealish blue on the, you know, this aquamarine on the outside and the other one, the aquamarine would be on the inside. So it'd be kind of cute. And again, you could use a matching fabric or matching thread, I mean. I use black so you can kind of see some of that in here. Now I'm coming into these corners where the ears are and pushing out and that's what I'm. That's why it sort of looks like it's poking there. That's because I'm using that turner. Don't please don't ever use like a um, like a knife, a, a, a pair of scissors or anything like that. Nothing sharp to do this because you'll go right through the fabric and then you'll go. Oh, I have to take it apart and sew it again. No, you don't want to do that. Use something blunt, a um, a bigger knitting needle or a like one that's blunt edge or a crochet hook can work sometimes. Or even chopsticks aren't bad. Um, and I, uh, but I like this particularly. Now you want to come along and hand stitch this shut or put it on your machine and shut it or uh, s stitch it. Or you can even, um, or you can even glue it shut. So um, I'm going to do that separately later, but I want to show you how the rest of this goes. Now what we got to do is we have to just, this is our outside. And so we're going to push the blue or the yellow to the inside. And the easiest place to put this whole thing together is over at the iron. So let's go over there and I'm gonna show you how to iron it and how to do the rest of the parts. So we're gonna use the hair ties as well. I think I'll definitely probably use a yellow one for this. I think it'd be cute. But what I'm gonna do is use my iron to just flatten this out. You could come along and top stitch this. That would be perfectly fine. Again, I don't think it's necessary for me, but if it is for you and you think, you think it would look nicer, cuter, then you should top stitch it. I think it's all up to your personal preference. Um, I don't think it's necessary for me. But if you like it, hey, 
make it cuter. And you know, I did 22 inch strips uh, by, by nine. You could make this, uh, the ears a little taller and make the bag a little smaller by going like 22 by eight or 22 by seven. Or uh, use fabric actually off the bolt rather than this way. And you can make it really big. I mean, you can make a really gigantic one if you wanted to go like 10 by, by 40 and make a really tall uh, creature. So there's there there he is. Look at that, it's so cute. Those are the ears so far. I need to get a, we need to pick a tail that's gonna look cute on here. And I don't know, do I want a yellow tail? I think a yellow tail would be cute. Or maybe, maybe even white on this is a better tail. So I'm gonna use white for my tail. And you can certainly glue it or you can stitch it. Either way, you're going to put the little tail on there. So either glue that or stitch that. And then when it's time, you're going to fill this up. So why don't we, I'll go ahead and stitch this on by hand. And then I'm going to show you how we put this whole thing together. It's going to be so cute. So I'm just finished putting on the little tail here. Um, I decided to stitch it. I think it's better than like hot glue or something. You could certainly use hot glue. Or I've seen people actually use them. Um, safety pins and just safety pin it in. But I thought it was cuter to do it actually uh, stitched in because it's gonna stay a lot longer. And I think it might, this might be a kind of thing that you can either get your family to give back to you if they've, you know, th this is what uh, you give them something in and they decide they don't wanna keep it. Well, then they can always give it back to you or they can keep it and use it for other stuff. It's really cute. Okay, so what I've decided uh, after I do this, I'm going to fill it up with a bunch of goodies that I have here. And I'm going to show those to you. I'm just finished stitching this on so it doesn't go anywhere. Now, I only did a tail, but you could easily add like a little eyes or nose or whatever. Um, I've seen people use um, buttons for a nose and that's really cute. But anyway, here's our little finished one. Um, I want to bring you down so I can show it a little better. Oh, there we are. So I'm just going to load this up with some stuff. Like I have a, a box of Smarties that's real cute. I'll throw that in the bottom to give it some push there and maybe some candies. And I've got a couple of you know, Easter eggs to put in there, some different things. You don't want to fill it too full. Like that maybe is a little too full. Maybe I take out two of the eggs because you want to be able to get the pieces to come together right up here. And I'm going to show you from this side because this makes more sense for you. The front side is where you really want to pay attention to your ears. So then I'm going to get one of these headbands to put on. So let's open those up. I thought I would use a yellow one. I think it kind of goes cute with it. So I'm going to pull these this up together and sort of put the headband on and double tie it because it needs to be doubled over. Cute. You can push it down until your little ears come out. Then I'm gonna twist the ears toward the front you know, so we get the ears both coming toward the front, which is really cute. And that's our cute little Easter bunny. How cute is that? Oh my goodness. I just think it's really great. Look at it. You could even sort of fold them, twist them a little bit. And there's a sweet little, now you might want to go, you certainly might want to go a little bigger. And if you went bigger, I'll show you what that would look like because I have one here. This one was done by a 10 by 20, uh, 10 by 44 piece. And so if I put some extra stuff in there and really filled that up, I'm just gonna shove some stuff in there. This one's larger, then I can come in with a, I'll use a blue one right here and I'll double it again, cause I wanna make sure it really holds. And then pull that all the way down. Now I didn't put a, 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 a butt on a, a butt. <laughs> I didn't put a tail on this one but who cares because it's still really cute. Now this one's a taller one, as you'll see. I'm gonna twist the ears around. And this one, I think I might even come to over to the, I might even decide to come over to my iron and say, but look how cute this one is. Now you have little ears. And this would be cute to put a little eyes and a button nose and everything on it and stuff so you can really tell that it's a bunny rabbit. You could even put some wire in the ears to get them to stick up if you wanted to. But look at the cute two different sizes. Aren't they sweet? All right, this has been this cute little bunny treat bag. I, I mean, I totally would use this um, in place of giving someone a full Easter basket if it was somebody who maybe is gonna get an Easter basket already. So like my nieces or nephews, they're already gonna get one at their house. If they come over to my house for Easter 
or if I go see them, this is just a cute little thing to give them a little something in, but I made the little bag and they have it as a remembrance and they can use it in other ways. But I'm not trying to compete with mom and dad's Easter basket or the one the Easter bunny brought them. All right, folks, uh, until next time, I hope you have a really great holiday and stay crafty. Bye for now. Hmm. I think I can eat this candy now. I think one piece fell on the floor. Mmm.